Hello, so my topic for introduction to historical research was over the Grizz Ferry Dam. And my thesis statement was, how did the Grizz Ferry Dam provide economic support and stability to Heber Springs and the surrounding areas? So what I mainly researched was like, the not only the construction of the dam, but like what role and impact the dam had to Heber Springs. So like what was the before and after, and how did the dam actually like build up Heber Springs and other communities in that surrounding area? do what they are now and I think it's really cool to look at like all the area and like the lake was there but it wasn't like as prominent as it was now and, like a lot of the towns were ghost towns like small communities that didn't have anything and after the dam was constructed a lot more of the things were like built up so like a lot of the roads would be blacktopped in or even power to some of the communities would be built into that area and so when the dam was being proposed into construction one of the biggest things that proposed it was the Flood Control Act. And so, in about a 30 year span, there's three major floods in that area. That was like all through Arkansas, down Louisiana, and the Mississippi River. And then so the Army Corps, Army Corps of Engineers uh, developed the Flood Control Act where they would go and they'd build dams and levees to try to control the floods and not have it in as devastating as areas. And there was millions of dollars of damage in this flood control act with countless deaths of many people. Farms would be destroyed. And then so this was actually introduced, endorsed by the whole South. So Heber Springs lobbied for the dam as it would uh, provide growth. And then along the Little Red River, which runs downstream of the, the Grizz Ferry Lake, the people there was also endorsing the dam when the Little Red ran into the White River. So all the way down to the Mississippi, where it connected to the Mississippi, all the people were endorsing the dam and wanted the dam in the area to provide flood control and like a way of life for farming and cattle and other businesses. And so one of the major reasons why the dam was put in was by influence of Wilbur D. Mills. He was in the Arkansas House of Representatives and at one time he was a chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee. And because of this, many people considered him one of the most powerful men in Washington. So he got a lot of things he wanted and proposed for. And it's, it's evident in this area that a lot of things that he wanted um, was built because of him. And there's a lot of things named after him. If you look at the teachers co-op in BB, it's called the Wilbur D. Mills co-op. Then like he was born in Kinsett, so there's different things in Kinsett. There's a like, alcohol uh, program in Searcy that he believed in and he built up and he's also a local lawyer. So he had a lot of local ties and while he was in Washington, he really took care of the people that was back home. And so what did the dam do? The dam had three major goals when it was uh, being built. And the first one would be hydroelectric power. The second one would be the flood control. And the last one would be to create a lot more recreation for the area. So I'm talking about hydroelectric power. A lot of the locals thought it would stay in Heber Springs since that's where the dam was built. But since it was the Army Corps of Engineers, they actually picked where the electricity went. So it actually did not stay local. I think it went to Missouri across state lines. And then if you look at how much money it's actually produced, over the 50 years it's been here, it's actually made more money than it actually costs. So if you look at just the economics of it, the dam's actually made money in just the hydroelectric power than it's actually cost to build the dam. The second part would be flood control. Uh, we touched on a little bit in the beginning about how the three major floods and the estimate money that if the dam wasn't there, how much uh, flood loss would be there is in the millions of dollars. So that saved a lot of money too. And it also like provided people a way of life and like the support and knowing that they were able to continue with their farm lives and have, able, have the ability not to be flooded out year in, year out. And lastly, uh, recreation. Heber Springs is known for recreation, so is the Grizz Ferry Lake. I think people all across the state come here to boat, and to have fun on the lake, especially the 4th of July weekend. You can hardly fit a boat in the water. And the Grizz Ferry Lake is actually voted one of the top 10 lakes in the nation over the cleanest lakes. We can take a boat or something out, leave out this dirt residue left behind. It's really clean water, really cold water. And another point I want to bring up with the JFK dedication. John F. Kennedy dedicated the lake in 1962. Uh, this didn't come, this came with his supporters and it came people protesting him as well, which I thought was kind of weird. We always think of John F. Kennedy as like one of the greatest presidents. But at the time people pro protested it. And Grizz Ferry Lake and the Grizz Ferry Dam 
was actually his last dead catch that he survived before he went to Arlington and before he was shot. So I think that's kind of cool. And then do have time, a little thing I ran across where they actually served lunch there. And so everybody there was given a half a chicken, a cup of baked beans, a bag of chips, and some water. So I think that was kind of cool. There was like 3,000 people there to a lot of chickens killed for that lunch. And the last thing I want to mention was like, it's called the JFK lookout or the Bill Clinton lookout. But there's also a statue of Woodward D. Mills there. I think that's important because I think people realize how much of the influence he had on this area. Not just like for economic or like the co-op built, but he's actually a major voice in building the dam. And like he actually took care of the people at home. So people recognize that and they had a statue built of it. And the dam today, the dam today is still operating with the same fact and functions that it had when it was built all that time in, in the 1960s. It still provides flood control, it still generates hydroelectric power, and it's evident there's still recreation on the dam day in and day out. One thing that is disappointing is the dam has been shut down for outsiders and for tourists ever since 9-11. So if you're one of the lucky ones that got to tour it before 9-11, I was not since I was not old enough. Um, but I don't, there hasn't been open for tourists ever since then. And so if you look at all the key components of the dam, what it does and what it has done, I think it's evident that it has provided a strong economic uplift to the communities. And we'll get in that, you can read more of that in my paper, but like towns like Higdon, Arkansas, that before the dam was built, it didn't have anything, but after it actually had to be removed because it was going to be flooded because of the dam because the water would rise but since it's moved a lot of the new buildings were built brand new the roads were blacktop that had power and so if you look at that standpoint a lot of people hated it but it actually like increased Higdon and like let the people there have nicer things or a better economic life in that standpoint the one thing that I found that people hated the dam for was cemeteries so a lot of these cemeteries they moved and a lot of them, a lot of people hated that because not only did you have to disturb the peace, the roasting grounds, but a lot of headstones weren't marked. So a lot of the older graves, they didn't actually have headstones until the rock place there. And so a lot of people would doubt that a lot of these cemeteries were actually moved because of the time and effort that it would take. I think there was like 30 something cemeteries moved. And so if you do like the math and know how much work actually had to be done and then how much paperwork had to be done too for like tracing back who was there and when they were buried and all that and get in touch with families that was one thing people hated the dam for and it's still evident today as I went to the historical society in Hebrew Springs one of the ladies there talked to me about it how her grandparents were their first grave site was now under the lake and they said they moved them but they never actually know is one thing that bothers her because you actually don't know. Once they flooded it, they say they might have moved them, but she said they might have just buried a hole and re redug that hole and placed their gravestone. So I can see where that was frustrating for a lot of people there. But in my paper, I'm most focused on the economic support. So the amount of money that was brought to area during the construction, what it did like in the middle between construction then and what now, what it did then and what it's finally doing today. And so my paper, you can definitely see how there's a increase in economic support and stability in the area. Because Heber Springs back then was mainly known for uh, its fresh water wells, but now it's everyone knows it for recreation. And I think people from all across the state come there to boat and to camp and uh, have a good time. And I think it's also apparent in a lot of the businesses are mainly, a lot of the revenue is generated during the summer. So a lot of the restaurants have a lot of summer and it's even surprised it's not surprising that there's a lot of summer based businesses only so a lot of marinas a lot of uh, boat docks repair and a lot of places that put in boat docks and that's mainly for summer only and there's two communities i want to talk about that are built because of the dam and that's fairfield bay and eden isle uh, both of these are kind of retirement uh upper class living so there are uh, clubhouses there's a bowling alley in fairfield bay and there's all these things that were if the dam wasn't there this would be there because of the lake and so if you get more of my paper you can read all about it and how it provide an economic uplift for heber springs in the communities but it's not necessarily about generating money it's also about saving money also 
that's also what I've talked about in my paper, how that uh, increased all the areas of economics as well. So I hope you enjoyed it and hope you read my paper and hope you enjoy it all. Thank you.